चल शिव अरुणा चल शिव अरुणा चल शिव अरुण शिवा साई 
प्रसन्न होगा
and guardian, everyone's beloved Bhagwan Sri Satya Sai Baba. Greetings, dear brothers, sisters, revered elders, all of you who have gathered here on this wonderful occasion where Lord Indra himself where Lord Indra himself to come and witness the 12th anniversary edition of Samarpan. Yes, dear brothers and sisters, we, have, we will be completing 144 editions of Samarpan today. What started off as a humble offering and a simple initiative in May 2011 has become almost a global phenomenon today with Samarpan sessions happening all over the country including Hyderabad, Mumbai, Delhi and even across the globe in places like the Middle East. So we are here to celebrate this momentous occasion. Exactly 50 years ago, on this very day, uh, the summer course in Indian culture and spirituality was being inaugurated. And I must guess it must have been a very cool evening, just like this, on that momentous day, when Bhagwan said in his discourse, Today in the world, we often hear news about some disturbance being caused in some part of the world, or some harm being done to some people somewhere. There is no news which causes happiness, heartens you, and tells you, things are more pleasant and permanent. The world itself is a drama of two days. This world is full of sorrow. How are we going to get any happiness in these surroundings? Brothers and sisters, let me remind you, this was 50 years ago, but sounds a lot like today, doesn't it? Then, is it all doom and gloom? for humankind in that case. But that is what the avatar is here for, right? In the same discourse, Bhagwan urged his students to go back 
to our roots and seek the solution in our ancient culture. He exhorted the audience then, you should be proud to be citizens of our great country. Tell yourself, my country is Bharat. My religion is the religion of Bharat. My ideals and traditions have been born in Bharat. You will have to dedicate your life to the future of this country. End of quote. It's Bhagwan's blessing today that we have in our midst one such exemplar who lives up to that dictum every day. Once, Bhagwan told him, whatever you do from here, make Bharat's name shine. This was Bhagwan's direct command to Brother Haresh Mirpuri, our speaker for today. Having learned the fundamentals of business and leadership from none other than the CEO of the universe himself, Brother Haresh is a successful entrepreneur and a name to reckon with in the luxury accessories sector. A phenomenal storyteller, a gifted singer and fitness enthusiast, Brother Haresh will share his experiences and lessons learned as a student and devotee of Bhagwan. I now request Brother Haresh Mirpuri to please take the podium. Sairam. Om Shri Sai Ram, I place my most humble pranams at the divine lotus feet of our beloved Swami. Sorry Swami, I have no other names for you except you're just my beloved Swami and I'm sure for all of us it is. My respected elders, my very dear brothers and sisters of this beautiful family we call a Sai family. I'm very grateful to you, Swami, for giving this opportunity to be able to share perhaps just a few of your lessons that you have given all of us in our daily lives. And I know you're here with us as we close our eyes as we imagine and visualize your beautiful feet on that stool of the chair with your orange robe going all the way up to your knees all the way up to your neck your fingers playing different mudras such that there could be many causes and happenings in this earth that none of us 
can ever see or behold. Such is your power that as you close your eyes during the bhajans and you swing your fingers, there can be many million things happening. And we that sing this bhajan may never know what immense power that you have. But yet, deep in our heart, we just sing along these beautiful bhajans and just know that we love you. Beyond anything, we don't know anything else. We just simply love you. There's a beautiful song that always I remember. <laughs> Every day we hear this beautiful tale of Swami and every day millions of people say, without Swami we don't know. What kind of power is that? No point to try to even imagine. Our mind is too little to fathom that. That immense power that you show and yet you will ask us, Bangaru, kaisa hai? While doing such amazing things, you will ask each one how they are doing. Wow! This is no human skill at all. It is nothing but divinity. Long back, yeah, sometimes if I just imagine what goes on, well, some time back, not really long. 1977, my mother heard about Balvikas in Jakarta. My mother is a very beautiful singer, especially of Meera bhajans, of devotional songs. That was her style of singing. And when she heard of Balvikas where they are training young, young students to learn basic shlokas, Guru Brahma, Guru Vishnu, Ganesh Lokas, she was very keen that we, her children, we were five of us, we are five of us, participate in Balvikas. We were always enchanted by the power and purity of her singing. And for me personally, I was like, wow, this is an opportunity for me to learn how to sing. So we learned the basic bhajan. Ganesha Sharanam Ramakrishna Prabhutu All those beautiful basic bhajans we learned. Then my mother, knowing that each one of us knew three, four bhajans, started making us sing at home also on Thursdays. We had family prayers together. Little did I know that that Balvikas was actually a preparation ground Swami was creating for what would be the rest of our lives. You know, when my father saw us kids singing bhajans, chanting shlokas, my father said, who is this who can teach little children outside of India bhajans and shlokas? He was very curious. My father has met many, many great saints and everything. It was always about how much can you contribute, how much can you... But he wanted, he always felt in his heart that his God... And due to a mosquito bite, and he never saw him. But one gift that he gave to my father when he left for Africa, he did tell my grandmother that if I don't come back, give this gift to my son and that is the Guru Granth, Guru Mukhi. So my father would read that every day. He used to tell me, this is my MBA. He knew every verse. He would chant it every day, he would read it and he learned a lot 
how to deal with life through that book. And he knew that at some point his God will come to him. He was curious to understand what is this? Who is this Sai Baba who could inspire little children like this? In those days, my father was a very tough business person, extremely tough. He could move ships across the country, he could do anything. He had, he had connections all over Indonesia. But he was always deep in his heart because of the reading of Guru Granth. He was always very spiritual. And when he saw this, he told to, to my mother, let's go find out who Sai Baba is. So they went to the center, found out how to reach. And they found that he's in Puttaparthi. You have to go to Bangalore. Those days to go to Bangalore, we had to go via Chennai. So it was Jakarta, Singapore, Singapore, Chennai. Then take a flight from Chennai to uh, Bangalore. And then we used to have a taxi service in those days. Babu taxi, he, I still remember. And uh, he, he would tell, uh, tell uh, devotees where to go. And when they reached, he said, you know, Swami is just on the way to, from Uti to Bangalore. So you don't have to go to Puttaparthi. Why do you want to book a taxi in Puttaparthi? So he said, okay, I can't wait to see him. Where can I meet this Sai Baba? He said, maybe you drive towards Mysore and you might see his car passing by. And so they drove from Bangalore eager and then close to Mysore, they saw Swami's car driving and suddenly it was huge rains. Incredible, like he, he didn't know whether he could catch up with them, the driver, but they followed Swami. Swami, and with so much rain, people were telling him, Sir, abhi nahi hoga, darshan nahi hoga. So, kaisa, Swami bahar nahi aega, balcony ke. But itna zor se, uh, the rain was so hard. How will it do? But my father said, if he is my God, he's going to come out. You know, and came out to the balcony holding both his hands, looking at the direction where my father was, pretty far, but looked at him just for a few seconds and then went back. My father was just amazed. He says, I had always told him, my God will find me. I will not have to search for him. And this is my God. And for that, my father's favorite song in those days, he used to always, every day sing, I remember. Tumhi ho mata, pita tumhi ho, tumhi ho bandhu, sakha tumhi ho. With a lot of tears, he fell to the ground and he said, You are my God. I will come to you every time. Thereafter, my father wanted us all to come to meet Swami, to meet his God. He was very keen, all of us were there. It was beautiful. As luck would have it, we reached Bangalore. This was the following year. We reached Bangalore. At that time, Hindu auntie, whom we all know lovingly as Kitchen Auntie, was the director of FNB in East West Hotel. That was the hotel where we stayed. And he said, You're coming to look for Swami? He said, Yeah, we want to go to Puttaparthi. He said, What good luck? I'm going to the ashram. Swami is in Brindavan. So those days, we all remember the beautiful Krishna statue at the center, Swami's chair in that round where the tree is and bhajans would go on. Swami, we all went, we were excited because we didn't really have to drive those days. Pati was three to four hours at least. It was not such smooth road. Lucky we got most of us, got the second row and Swami walks from Darshan, yeah, from the old Rai building, he will walk on the sands, walks, walks, came straight to my father. We were most of us in the second row, but he looked at my father. Hey, Puri, kabhi aya. Shocked my father. I have not introduced myself, he was thinking. And Swami is calling me by almost my name. 
our surname is Mirpuri, right? And so, Kabhi aya, he asked. My father was quiet, didn't know what to answer. He said, ha, ah, pura family, leke jau, andar. So, when Hindu auntie on the lady's side noticed Swami instructed this, she guided all of us. But it was the, it was the most amazing interview because we didn't get to speak to Swami. Why? Because we were so overwhelmed by His love that we cried full time. I mean, the entire interview, we didn't give a chance for Swami to even speak to us. Swami said, stop crying. Interview, you ha- I'll speak to you. But we were crying for almost 45 minutes. None of us knew why we cried when we came out. But we were so ever overwhelmed with His love that we just cried and cried and cried. So as an act of savior to the whole interview, Swami told us, okay, I'll do one thing for today. You Sindhis like this sweet. And He created hot, hot mawa cake, Kalakhand. You know, for us we call it mawa. Hot, hot mawa cake. We were just full, full hands. Didn't know how, it, how much could come out. We never asked those questions. But we were pleasantly surprised. And Swami just flooded our hands with that mawa cake. Said, have now and come tomorrow. I thought, wow, what a good strategy. Next interview, you better cry a little more in the next one. You might get another one after that. But of course, you know, the next day, in fact, in, during that trip, Swami gave us all beautiful five interviews. In those interviews, one of the times, Swami looked at my mother and said, Meera, kaise hai? My father looked at Swami, you know, because early days, we thought Swami made a mistake. Swami, her name is Geeta, not Meera. Swami looked at him and said, Hari, you marriage ke baad isko janta hai. Main marriage se pehle isko janta hai. Marriage ke pehle kya naam hai? And it was Meera. You know, that is Swami. He said, Meera hamesha Krishna ke bhajans gata hai. Nahi? And true enough, my mother was a very deep worshipper of Krishna. Her bhajans would revolve around Krishna a lot. And so, Swami would from that day call her just by that name, Meera. There was no Gita for Swami because He knew her way back. He knew, He knows all of us way back than our present names. And that is exactly what Swami said. Swami then told my father of all the prayers, my father was fortunate that he was given the opportunity to help set up the Gurdwara in Jakarta. He had a lot of connections for him to set it up. It was much easier than many other Indian community. And Swami would dis- describe in the interview every single prayer that my father said. He would chant it. My father was left with zero doubt as to who Swami is. We as children, we were just awestruck with what all was happening. We were happy, we got pictures with Swami, we got lots of vibhuti, we got sweets, we got all the beautiful things Swami does to His children. You know, and with that became our journey to His ways of things. The next time we came, Swami told us, I'm going to put a party. You come. We thought we'll come. Didn't know we had to follow or anything. So we took our own time. And we left in the evening because we had to pack our bags and everything. You know? As we left, again we hit torrential rains. It became very, very dark. We were somewhere in the hills. We could see nothing. Nothing. The driver said, Abhi nahi ja sakta hai sab, abhi idhar hi rukna. And then we heard a lot of sound of drums. 
dum, 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 and the driver was panicking. He said, Sir, either chor log hai, danger hai abhi tumhare liye. As a family, what did we do? No choice. Om Bhur Bhua Swahatat Savitur Parinjam Bhargo Devas Yadi Mahi Diyo Yuna Prachudaya Om Sai Shuraya Vigmai We were at yelling at our peace and saw me and my father knowing that the whole family is in the car he was just saying Sai, saw me, help us and out of nowhere right beside us suddenly we saw a bus fully lit up Headlights on, fog lights. Those days fog lights were not even known. Yeah, Headlights on, fog lights. We could see the road and my father said, follow the bus. As we were getting close to the bus, we couldn't see a driver. It was empty. The bus was just speeding. And we were following, not knowing where it was going, not knowing where we were. And then, as we were near the Prashanti Nilam gate, it made a right turn and that's it. None of us saw it again. In those days, Kutum Rao uncle, he was waiting near the gate because Swami had told him, they have come, you give them a room quickly and give them dinner. I'll see them tomorrow. So, we reached, we were grateful, we got a room, we took shower, whatever, and the next day, Swami comes, walking from darshan. From those days, was from the interview room to the lady side, and Swami saw my mother and said, "Kesa hai wo bus driver? Thik chal raha tha? We all, we all knew who the bus driver was. His he being there always, you know, and many times we just hear this bhajan and I'm always reminded by this. Nirakari Allah, He Avatari Prabhura, Janam Janam. Most of us don't realize how many lives we must have taken to just get the opportunity even today to sit on this piece of earth where the two divine feet have walked so many times, zillions of times and to be standing and sitting it is not coincidence, it is not our will, it is not our effort Swami always told us nothing, not even a leaf will move without my will is nirakari we wish we Swami we are a little foolish, we need a form we can't see you as Nirakari, we can't see you as the energy of the light. So you'll have to forgive us for all that. But you truly are, and many times you have shown how beautifully you can do that. Swami then asked me to join his school. He asked me, where are you going for studies? My mother always wished that we all as a, ch as a children would study in India because they were keen that we understand the values of India, being Indian. So I, told, we got, I got a seat at St. Lawrence School, Lovedale, in Uti. And uh, so I said, Swami, I'm going to Uti. Hamara school me. We were surprised. We didn't know Swami had a school in Uti. Ajja, udar jao, wo principal hai na, Mrs. Mar Varma se uh, bolo. And Swami made arrangements for us to go and meet mother. We, we always, she is like amazing lady. She is a mother only. We, though we called her mother, we felt she is like a mother over there. And uh, Swami then we, when we went, Swami took arrangement for our car, for our journey, we went there. And then, 
mother came and said yes swami did send word that you are coming very good i have to conduct the basic interviews in the interview she found out i had finished my fifth grade then she said i am really sorry we don't have sixth grade here so we were wondering but swami said to come here she got a call within 15 minutes of this discussion saying swami is coming tell them to wait and he wants to speak to us swami made arrangements in das prakash hotel and he left word with uh, nanjan sir that these children like dosas there it is good tell them <laughs> in das prakash hotel it's good i mean for us we were being treated by the lord himself we felt so blessed and we went i love personally i loved the school anything in india i always loved it you know and swami came after two days and then swami calls us for an interview at that time swami looks at me and said get up i got up and swami got up also and i was wondering wow swami is getting up what is he going to instruct me but he just held my head over here and then he put his forehead on my forehead i couldn't believe it i didn't know how long it was i just closed my eyes it is like saying i'm going to align you to my ways and if you don't align you will suffer that's also part of my life but it was such a beautiful occasion swami made me sit down brother radha krishna was there and then he looked at radha krishna and said abhi ye boy fifth grade ho gaya kya kar sakta hai abhi sixth grade ko jana hai and brother radha krishna just smiled and said swami whatever you say it, we also was like and then look at the beauty of swami's words he looks at me not my parents not anyone he looks at me and says kya swami ke liye tum fifth grade fir repeat kar sakta hai he is the lord of universe all he had to do was okay repeat fifth grade we would have accepted and said great i'm a child of some 10 years old 9 or 10 years old and I, and he's like will you repeat for swami's sake how can i refuse that kind of love how can anyone in this world refuse that kind of love and that's when he told mrs verma take him he will repeat fifth but he won't need to study so hard so give him a lot of work told nanjan uncle please take him for your purchase trips he will also learn how to do some purchases you know it was so beautiful because of that uh, my height was slightly taller than every other child so swami got a special cot which is not double deck <laughs> prepared for me and that's it i just we just had that most beautiful time in uti and at that point of time swami has always been particular about the health about sports about bhajans during that period there was an incident you're going to have to forgive me for my terrible pronunciation but there was a beautiful bhajan that i heard ravi singing to swami manna nalu tiruchendur mannave orumarmanalu porimudir cholai marmave i won't go beyond that because i won't be allowed but my god i saw swami standing in front of ravi throughout the 
time that he was singing Swami just did that for an entire devotional song I said wow Swami to get close to you music is definitely one solid path you know and luckily a little bit of background of Bhalvikas like I said that was more a preparation ground Swami just I just decided I'm going to start learning everything and see what I can do finally so we had a very nice brother by name Subhashish Dao he was very good in Nal Ravi was just divine singer we had another brother by name Pradeep uh, he's from Assam Swapnil from Assam we had a great class and uh, at that time I said let me just learn everything possible because that is definitely the way we were finishing we had a great time in Uti yeah, Nirmala sister warden auntie was our warden you know all the teachers Muni sister was our maths teacher most amazing lady and we we cherish those moments till today and then Swami, after fifth standard, Swami shifted us to Puttaparthi. Such was his care. We were shocked because we were told we were getting into Ishwarama High School. And that was Telugu medium. We were like, oh my God, how, where, where is my starting point <laughs> for a sixth grade in Telugu medium? But Swami plans to the tiniest possible detail. He had arranged for English speaking teachers. He had arranged that time primary school had just Mr. and Mrs. Craxi had just finished construction of primary school. So until fifth grade they were in primary school. So my brother was in primary school. At sixth grade we were staying in the boys' hostel, and you know, and that was great days. I mean, I can't forget the times of Mr. Nityanand Men and Kiran Patel sir, Anup Jalani. My God, these were, they were so dynamic. They could pull out of their devotion Swami to the hostel. But we think we are doers. That's the problem sometimes. But it's overall, if you, as we get closer, you will see what Swami has planned. Well, we had a lot of Kavalis. Swami would come every time. We were great. We were feeling grateful because when Swami comes, we would get paneer little children that's all that little <laughs> blessings we would get Ravi was continuously singing never stopped you know most of our voices were cracking by the time we were in seventh uh, and then it went on we had a the most amazing sixth grade we ever had Swami would check initially the bathrooms uh, including some of us who would play room cricket in the name of being sick all those things happened you know but Swami established a beautiful system of bhajans songs devotional songs there was no time when the hostel was not buzzing you know and slowly Swami in his own ways for reasons he knows best created a lot of movement changes but each change created a bigger dynamic they say energy always moves in circular motion to create greater energy and it was so visible each time the music was getting better and better we saw a huge influx of musicians we saw besides Sai sir playing tabla we had Abhinav we had Silesh sir we had Bharat Dutt, we had Krishnamurti Gopinath who played accordion he was fabulous he was because every time you play accordion you have to stand up and I said and I kept looking every time he's standing up Swami is looking at him more than other instrumentalists obviously and I said wow that's an instrument I have to pick up <laughs> that's how I journeyed into learning accordion because our intention was very clear how to get Swami's eyes to look at us so that hopefully he'll pass a comment good or bad a comment is always a blessing yeah and possibly some Padmaskar 
I mean, the intention of all all students, I'm sure, till today is just that. We get prasadam, we get blessings, we get a dream, we get an instruction. I, there was no other joy other than that. You know, and you know, they, some of the singers, Kote, Sanjeev, Barbara, slowly the music standard went higher and higher and higher. Eskumar brought in a twist to Carnatic music, you know, and just Arun Kumar Tiwari, he also had his own charm in the way he sang bhajans, V Kumar. As music developed, Swami then did one beautiful thing. He encouraged group singing. And who was the great devotee Swami chose? His name is Al Drucker. He taught us songs in Hebrew. And let me just, if you can follow, it would be great. You know, it would be just nice to remember those. Shalom Kaverim, Shalom Kaverim, Shalom, Shalom. Dom Kaverim, Shalom Kaverim, Shalom, Shalom. Lehi Taut, Lehi Taut, Shalom. Tidings we bring of peace on earth, goodwill to all men. Tidings we bring of peace on earth, goodwill to all men. Glad tidings we bring of peace on earth, goodwill. So like this, you know, there was daily practice in the dining hall. We all had to practice 10 times, 20 times probably before the group singing would come and Swami would just come his, with his incredible smile, throwing his joy and love to all the devotees who were fortunate to physically be there on that day. It was so beautiful, so beautiful. Then from there, it went on to Christmas carols, more complex songs came up. But that is how Swami built. Swami made all his plans come up slowly, deeply and surely. It became ingrained within us. Swami never did anything in a hurry, some kacha thing happens and, okay, next. That is not at all Swami's way. It's always very, very long term, very long term. We had a great time when Swami brought in Habu sir to be our principal. What a magnificent man. Complete best of the army man you would get in terms of discipline. But that love for Swami's students to achieve the heights. I mean, you'll hardly find people of that level. Absolute love. We would think he's strict. Uh, there is no way we could pass a single day without doing our jogs or runs. Became part of our culture over there. And on top of that, the kind of discipline, study hours, he would make sure and he believed that if you use your hours well, you don't need to sleep late at night during exams. His concept was very clear and he followed it up right up to what all we studied. Each and every student he would know by the name, how their last, what was the last test marks that they got. I mean sometimes I say, <laughs> I barely can remember 30, 40 names at a time. 
definitely not what they've done in the last five years to that detail that he would remember and how they've come up. And he would encourage those of us who knew bhajans to be fantastic at bhajans, those of us who played sports to be fantastic at sports. So it was not he, was, he wanted us to cram. But he was very clear that as Swami students, we all have to start by getting first class. And then it became distinction. So that culture that you see happening today was set by Swami in those days. And to make us understand the beauty, the love of Swami, because most of us were getting exposed to Swami's talks as his discourses, and sometimes, not sometimes, we were kids, we could sleep a lot, sometimes, many times also, and then he called Professor Kasturi. And Professor Kasturi, every single Thursday, would speak of how Swami, for him, is the true Prema Sai. When he released his book, My Beloved, I think all the students just clap, clap. Because what more appropriate can you tell Swami? Except that you are my beloved. I don't know how to put the name of a father, mother, uncle, friend, whatever. I don't know how, none of us knew how to limit Swami's love to a limited form. Because such was His love that it encompasses everything. Swami also brought in Kishan Lal, who trained our boys in gymnastics. And with all these, there was great improvements in music, in sports. It became, Swami started taking interest to watch a lot of matches between school versus college. You know, and you can all guess it, Swami ensures that the school wins and teases the college boys in all these matches. You know, uh, basketball we won in school, everything. We were happy when we were in college, Swami didn't make us compete with school, you know. <laughs> but then there was a lot of mixed matches, house matches, and little did we realize Swami was planning a grander thing called the annual sports meet. Look at the way he does, little, 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 brought it up, brought it up, brought it up, and then he invested into what is called the annual sports meet, which till today we all love it, you know. While all these was going on, I wasn't very aware that in 1982, my father's factory had burnt completely. Because Swami was giving us so much love, so much this, we were not one, we were not concerned what was going on there. Because Swami didn't show any difference, nor did He allow my parents to show any difference. But what, we, what started happening was my mother would come for holidays, because we have five children, very expensive, for five flights to go up, down. So my mother would come and we thought, great, because with my mother coming, more interviews, more chances for interviews. You know, that is all life mattered, right, in those days, Namaskar, interview, one word from Swami. You know, and then to the point, that even when I was in my 8th standard, Swami one day called me, Hey, Dunapotu, either out. I said, Wow, I'm going to get it today. I said, Dekho ra, tumara beard kaisa hai? I said, Beard. <laughs> I wasn't sure if I could see the beard, but Swami could see, and that is enough. That time Narasimurti was our warden, and he called Narasimurti. He said, Give him right now one set for shaving. So, I was given and I was left to shave. Uh, you can imagine, I was bleeding all over, <laughs> plasters all over. I came for darshan, not sure. Swami asked, him, asked me, Kya ra, kaiku? Kya hua? I said, Swami, shaving kia. <laughs> he said, Tumko malum nahi shaving kaise karna hai? And so blessed, he actually called Brother Radha Krishna and said, teach him how to shave. So I had the opportunity to go inside the interview room into the 
bathroom and I was learning how to shave. You can imagine in Puttaparthi how many things were going. Devotees were, were increasing like anything. Programs were going on. Veda chanting started. You know, we all had to learn Vedas. Like thousands of things were going on and here is Swami looking at somebody who needed to shave. And I'm sure like me, there could have been at least a hundred others who Swami would look into. But I mean, that kind of energy, that kind of power, how can we even imagine and say He took a human form? Yes, Swami, you took a whole human form, but that form was a mighty powerful one for sure. There is no way any of us can even think to reach that level. Saying that, you know, I, I was just, as a family, I think we were all drunk by His love. None of us knew what was going on behind. My, the, my father's factory had burned, he had to start all over. And then we came to know much later, in 19, when the factory burned, so my father was told by everyone, see, you put your children in Sai Baba's school and what bad luck, you've lost everything. And now he's told you, no more corruption, no more anything, no more government this, that. So you, now what are you going to do? You're finished. He says, I'll go to Swami. And he goes, Swami called him, didn't call us. Because really, Swami, I, I used to feel bad why Swami sometimes didn't call me or my mother, why only my father is getting interview. I didn't realize that Swami was just not even allowing us to be concerned. That was his love. And when Swami looked, uh, Swami, he, he was reading a lot of letters. My father sitting, Swami is reading first letter, second letter. In between, my father took some courage and said, Swami, bahut problem hua. Kya? Swami, bahut problem hua. Achha. And he read letter. 30 minutes inside, Swami is only reading letters, not even asking him, what is the problem? Again, Swami, uh, he told, Swami, bahut problem hua. Swami looked at him like this. Achha, compare karo tumhara problem or Mirabai ka problem. Kiska problem bada hai? <laughs> Father said, Mirabai ka problem baut bada hai sir. Are, abhi tumhara problem Mirabai ke saamne baut chota ho gaya? And my father was nonplussed. He said, ha Swami, baut chota. Abhi tum baut bada problem bolta hai, abhi chota bolta hai. Decide karo ra. Problem bada hai ya chota hai? He kept quiet. He said, bada ya chota. It's mind problem. Not actual problem. Jao, hard work karo. He patted him on his back. He said, I will help you. And with that, my father went to Indonesia. The guy who is the architect and the developer of the factories, he said, Pamohan means, respectfully, Bapa means like an elderly. I'll build your factory again. And my father said, yeah, but I don't have money to pay. And he laughed. He said, are you kidding me? You, I'm starting the factory. You pay whenever you want. I know you'll pay. So halfway through, he asked, you haven't paid me. He said, I told you, why are you building? I don't have money to pay you. I haven't got insurance, nothing. He got a shock. He said, but I built almost fully done. Only painting is left. What do I do now? He said, you calculate what is the interest you want. When I can pay, I'll pay. All the workers comes to my father and says, we are doing the painting. We will work for three months or more, whatever it takes, for free. You rebuild yourself. My father got the news that there's a buyer 
who's coming to Singapore, a friend of his told him, he went to meet what buyer, what to produce, no clue. So he went, he, it's a buyer of one of the top corporations of U US and he said, okay, I'll finance you with machinery and fabric and all materials you need to produce. You charge only labor rate. And that's how he rebuilt the whole company. We might think we are smart, we can't. If somebody were to ask my father or even me, can you redo what you did before? It's impossible. It's that tap from Swami. Hard work karo. Swami tumko help karega. Those words are so mighty that all these incidents happen. And just to keep the flow of his love within the family to allow my father to rebuild. I remember a beautiful incident. My mother, as I told you, used to come right from Akhan Bhajan in November till Christmas, New Year's. Right? And in one Akhan Bhajan, she sang this Bhajan. <clears throat> Akhand Jyoti Jalavo Sai Manaman Dirmi Akhand Jyoti Jalavo Swami came out from upstairs in Prishantilya Mandir and He stood there throughout the time. Such is Swami's greatness that He knew what experience to give each person that fulfills their longing for Him. That one incident my mother carried all her life. Swami became her Akhand Jyoti. Her life revolved. When Swami didn't speak to her, it hammered the life out of her. And her smile came back only when Swami spoke to her again. You know, such is Swami's love that once you feel it, once you get it, you can't live without it. You know, and beautiful bhajan always <clears throat> reminds me. Karuna Niketana Bhakta Sakha Prabhu Sharana Milo Bhagavan Dukh Bhanjana Shri Ram Swami in His love has never told, I'm busy, Ra, I can't help you for today. Swami has crores of activities, not even to one devotee he has ever told that I'm busy, don't, I don't have time for you. That is just his amazing time. And I remember in my 11th grade when Swami called me in front of the VIPs, they were in the balcony in the inside Prashanti Nilam Hall. Swami called me and I said, they asked me, Hey, Puri, he called me Chota Puri, who am I? I thought, wow, so many VIPs, I'm supposed to perform, because I, the ego, have to make a performance. When we are egoistic, we make performance, right? So, I said, Swami, you are God. Kyara, you're not even saying it with any belief. How do you know I'm God? I was bold. I thought I said the right thing. It should have pleased the great Lord. And how, how come I'm like, he's questioning, how do you know? And I was clueless. What to answer? Because we were thinking we had to answer. We didn't ask, what Swami, what am I to you? Work through me. You know, it's, and then he looked at me and said, don't ever tell me I'm God if you don't know why I'm God. Even you are God. Difference is I know I'm God, 
you don't know you are God. Go and sit. After that, I know some of you boys will be smiling. I had the biggest silent treatment ever in my life till my 12th grade. I had no clue. And Swami would call my family for interview. He'll sit, he'll watch me sit with them, never tell me to go back. And when we are all entering, hey, Barja. Nastiest time in my life. I felt hurt and I thought, am I feeling hurt because he's asking me to stand out or because I'm not getting his love? It was a mixed mind. It was definitely both of it. My ego self was overpowering. Definitely. It was so bad that my entire 12th grade, we had group photos with Swami, but the most silent treatment till in 1988 my name came for Brindavan and I thought my god here is a chance now, those days Brindavan is Swami's playground you know and then of course later it became Kodakana but Swami was always in his most informal and playful ways in Brindavan and I said yes I've joined Brindavan surely Swami will speak to me because he Swami selects every name who goes where because he selected my name to be in Brindavan you know and we, we always had wonderful teachers over here but I used to wonder hmm we've come Swami's come not a word second month it broke me down I was just finished off with that I had no clue what is my relevance anymore if at all I should have a relevance And then I prayed, I said, I've always told you I'll reach you through music. Let me figure out. So I gave a letter, like big, you know, like at least a hundred meters if possible. <laughs> Distance Swami asked for my letter and through many boys the letter reached his hand because mine was too defiled at that time <laughs> with my ego self for Swami to pick it up from my hands. And I read a, wrote, wrote a letter that if I could get his permission to sing. And uh, those days you just asked Swami if he could sing and if he agreed, you sang. You know, and Swami sent word through Warden, he can sing. I thought, wow, at least there is a response. It shows that Swami does not leave you without a response you know and then came this song because I really wish Sai Charan Sukhdai Man Sai Charan Sukhdai Man Sai Bina Jina Kya As if it was another enough. Mata Bitu Pita Bitu Mata Bitu Pita Bitu Avo Bhagavan Biju Darshan Mataja Sai Manaman Virse. At this point, Swami just looked at me throughout the bhajan. I didn't sing it. I took a safe bet and said, ask Ravi if you could sing. But Swami kept staring at me throughout the bhajan. And then he says, in my mind, I was like, even if you don't want to talk to me, at least let me not be so desperate that I forget you. Let me not be so desperate that I wish to leave here. Let me not reach that stage and then Swami looked at me and said that 
and I was so grateful, though I had the chance of playing the harmonium, that he, the Universal Master, recognized my prayers, responded to it. And of course, after that, he gave us a beautiful opportunity to compose a new Kavali. And he said, overnight, I want tomorrow a new Kavali. And, you know, we were like, tomorrow, <laughs> Kavali. None of us ever have done anything like that. So we had a brother by name Sanjay. He was, I think, third year. And Sanjay Singh. And, uh, you know, we, he's great at Hindi. I'm not a lyricist at all. So we sat down together and then we composed this Muhabbat Ki Kami. I will not sing it because nobody sings it better than Ravi. Yeah, but, uh, you know, it was so beautiful that evening. Swami said, I want to hear it in the morning. We finished only at 5.30. Till 12, we were thinking we had to compose again, ego self up. Couldn't come out with any tune. We just prayed. Swami, please, you tell us what to compose. And then the ideas flowed. By 5.30, we had the words, lyrics, we had the music. 6.37, we were sitting. Swami asked us, ready hai? Ha, ready. Okay. Evening ko chustani. <laughs> we will say, okay, at least we were ready. You know, Swami asked us, were we ready? We were grateful we were ready. Yeah, and, you know, Warden Sir said, hey boys, you know, make sure music piece, everything is proper when you're performing. <laughs> All of us said, this Swami is going to decide. The fate of that Kavali is so beautiful that Swami enjoyed because of the intensity in which we prayed to Him to allow us to compose. That's why many people, when they asked, did you compose? I said, no. I think we were just given the opportunity by Swami to offer a beautiful Kavali to Him. And such was His love that probably for the first full year, whenever Swami made Kavali, this Kavali to be sung, I had to go and play the harmonium. Sham Kishore, my batchmate, had to play the tabla. And, uh, you know, and Ravi would sing. I mean, these are the little incredible ways that Swami showered His love. I see that I'm pretty close to the time, you know, and there could be many, many such opportunities that Swami gave us all. <clears throat> One particular incident I remember in our MBA, we didn't know what to sing to Swami, what, it was a drama, how to end the song, how do, how do we describe really who is, because MBA Swami took us to Chennai, to Kodaikanal, showered so much love that we simply offered this. I remember the drama, Swami asked, what's the name of the drama? Then I said, Swami, some dharma, dharma, he said, nahi, dharma, Rakshati Rakshita. Those who protect Dharma will always be protected. And then we did a group song. Jab koi baad bigar jaye, jab koi mushkil par jaye, tum dena saath mera, wo hum nawa. Na koi hai, na koi tha. जिंदगी में तुम्हारे सिवा तुम देना साथ मेरा वो हम नवा स्वामी clapped his hands so much just came up to the stage at the end of the song and it's like a big embrace to all of us he gave and took photographs you imagine Swami who created hospitals, who created so much, entire organizations across the world, always has this special love for his students. <clears throat> Sai Ram, ha 
is the relationship then and now and always between Swami and his students. We felt Swami was ours but what is amazing that Swami called us as his whether we deserved it or not who are we to question we are just blessed immensely to be called his to be given the opportunity of this life to be called his. When Swami took Samadhi, I was thrown out. I, I couldn't stand it. I couldn't come here. I couldn't come to Parthi. I had no clue. What is Sam Ma Samadhi, Swami? Why? We were so used to being guided by Him, so blessed by Him. Why Samadhi? Hmm. to see you? How do we get to feel you? How can we live our life suffering not knowing how to touch you? That was our prayer and Swami gave a simple during one of our MBA interviews he gave a very simple answer when one of our brothers asked Swami how do we feel you every day? He said Kyara, so simple. When you get up, say, Good morning, Swami. Sai Ram Swami. When you're going to brush your teeth, say, I'm brushing my teeth, Swami. I'm going to have my breakfast, Swami. If you keep talking to me, report to me what you've done every single day of your life, you will hear me from within you. Drastic step. Swami took for us to learn this. Till today, we, we can only be grateful. Grateful for His love, for His mercy, for Him being with us, for Him walking amidst us, giving us the opportunity to stand on the ground, these two little feet that can perform such great miracles, that can move mountains, oceans, that moves the entire universe. And we always say, let us do something for Swami. We are foolish. We can't do anything for Swami. We are only doing it so that we annihilate our karmas and one day reach Him. That's it. Never in our life should we think we are doing this for Swami. Swami doesn't need anybody of us. He's capable of turning the whole universe the way He wants it. Let us just be grateful for every opportunity that He gives us till today to serve Him, to be able to participate in the activities he has taught us. With this, I conclude, I offer my gratitude to Swami to allow what He wishes to convey to all of us today through this session and I pray that all of us continue to feel his existence wherever we go and wherever we hum his tunes. Let us always be connected forever and ever. Jai Sai Ram.
It will take some time for all of us to recover from that beautiful saga of love that uh, Sir uh, that Harissa shared with all of us. Of course, as alumni, all of us uh, might have been taken back to those many memorable moments that brother shared with us, like Swami's visits to the hostel, of course, the room cricket, bhajans, the annual sports meet, and the many overnight programs that Swami commanded of us and made us deliver, or rather delivered through us. But amidst all the fun and uh, beautiful memories, there were so many lessons that we picked up through this. And I think it is the story of each and every one of us. Like when brother's father declared that my God will find me, I do not have to go searching for him. Isn't that what happened to each one of us? Swami being the master planner, his plans manifesting slowly, deeply, surely. Isn't that his master plan for our life? We have always yearned for that glance. People like me may be tonally challenged, but what can we do to earn that one glance from Bhagwan, that one smile on his lips? Whatever setback there may be, if we proceed with faith, Swami is with us every step of the way. Let us always be prepared so that when Swami asks us, ready hai, the only answer we have is ready hai Swami. With these words, I now invite the warden of the Sri Satisa Institute of Higher Learning Senior Boys Hostel, Dr. T. Ravi Kumar, to honor our speaker with a shawl as a token of our love and appreciation. Brother. Next, I request Professor C. N. Sundareshan, former Director and Dean of Research and currently Honorary Professor in the Department of Chemistry at the Brindavan campus of Sri Satisa Institute of Higher Learning, to please come forward and do the honours of presenting Brother Harish with a bouquet of flowers as a small token of our gratitude. Thank you so much, uh, Brother. We sincerely thank the Sri Satisai Seva Organization Karnataka and the Brindavan Management Committee for to the total support to organize Samarpan this month as they have been doing every month. We are thankful to the director, warden and all the students of the Sri Satisai Institute of Higher Learning Brindavan campus for participating in this session despite the looming end semester exams. We also thank the audiovisual team for all the arrangements they have made, making this possible not only for us, but thousands of people across the world who are witnessing it today or will do so in the future. Finally, thank you to the Brindavan Lady Sevadal team for the sumptuous prasadam that will follow. Thanks to all of you in the audience who are here despite the rains, sharing in the joy of the Lord's divine experiences. A few announcements that uh, need to be made. Next month, the 145th Samarpan Satsang session, Chiranjeevi U Bharat Sharma from Tirupati. Avadhanam is an extraordinary literary exercise that originated in Andhra Pradesh, in Telugu, 
and is now being practiced in Sanskrit, Hindi and Kannada as well. Talented scholars on scriptural, cultural and literary themes is known as the Avadhani. If an Avadhani faces eight scholars, it is Ashtavadhana. <coughs> Hundred scholars, it is Shatavadhanam. And a thousand scholars, it is Sahasravadhanam. The program starts at 4 p.m. with Vedam and will conclude with Mahamangala Aarti to Bhagwan at 6.30 p.m. All the devotees, along with their family and friends, are requested to please attend and witness this grand event. Now, Prasadam will be served at the rear end of Sai Ramesh Hall after Mangala Aarti. Request everyone to please partake Prasadam before leaving. Now, I request Harish brother to please perform the Aarti. Sai Ram.
सुखिनो समस्त लोका सुखिनो ओ शांति 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 जय बोलो भगवान श्री सत्य साई बाबा जी की जय स्वस्ति प्रजाभ्य परिपालयता मार्गेण महे महेशा गो ब्राह्मणेभ्य शुभमस्त समस्तलोका सुखिनो Oh, oh, oh.